What I have here is a polarizing filter, also known as a polarizing film. A polarizing filter will only let an electromagnetic wave through whose electric field intensity is in the direction of the polarizing filter, which I am indicating with an arrow. You can think of it like a rope through a picket fence. If I'm vibrating the rope up and down, the vibration of the rope will easily pass through the picket fence, resulting in a vertically polarized wave. Here I have a second polarizing film, and when I have it oriented in the same direction as the first one, the electromagnetic wave can pass through because the wave going through the first one is vertically polarized and can pass through the second vertically polarized film. But if I rotate at 90 degrees, the electromagnetic wave cannot get through. This would be like having two picket fences, one where the slats are oriented vertically and one where the slats are oriented horizontally. So if you tried to vibrate a rope, the vibrations would not be able to pass through the two perpendicularly oriented slats of the two picket fences. A monitor already contains a polarizing film. If I take my film and rotate it counterclockwise, you see that the image gets brighter and there's a maximum brightness when it's pointing to the upper left. It is now in the same direction as the polarizing film inside the monitor. If I now take the film I'm holding and rotate clockwise, when I have rotated 90 degrees, it will be at right angles to the polarizing film inside the monitor and we no longer see the image. Our simple mental model with the rope through a picket fence will not explain polarized light going through a 45 degree oriented polarizing filter. We now have to invoke the particle nature of light. The photons in light are polarized. When they encounter a polarizing filter, the probability of a photon passing through varies with the angle between the polarization of the photon and of the polarizing filter. The probability varies from 1 when all the photons pass through the polarizing film when the angle between the polarizing film and the polarization of the photons is 0 degrees to 0 when none of the photons pass through the polarizing film when the angle between the polarizing film and the polarization of the photons is 90 degrees. One other consequence of the interaction of the photon and the polarizing film is that the photons that pass through the polarizing film will have the same direction of polarization as the film. The diagonally polarized photons coming from the monitor that pass through the vertically oriented polarizing filter will be vertically polarized. I've taped a polarizing film to the monitor to produce vertically polarized light. Here is my second polarizing film and again if it's in the same direction as the first film all the light is transmitted. If I rotate it 90 degrees no light is transmitted. With my two polarizing filters oriented at 90 degrees you do not see the image. Now I'm going to bring in a third polarizing filter, but I'm going to bring it in at a 45 degree angle to the other two. And when I bring it in, in between those other two polarizing filters, you see the image. However, if I bring it in in front of the other two polarizing filters, you do not see the image. To explain this phenomenon, we're going to have to look at the photon nature of light and quantum mechanics. Here is a representation of a transverse electromagnetic wave propagating in the positive z direction and that's linearly polarized in the x direction because the electric field intensity is only in the x direction. 
Coupled to this electric field intensity is a magnetic field intensity that is in the y direction. I will just focus on the electric field intensity as the direction of polarization is defined as the direction of the electric field intensity. More generally, the electric field intensity can have a component in the x and the y directions and there can be a phase shift between the two components. Let's assume no phase shift, so set theta is equal to zero. To discuss polarization, we are going to look at the electric field intensity in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation. One such plane is the z equals zero plane, which is the xy plane. So we'll set z is equal to zero. So the electric field intensity is the vector sum of the x and the y components, so the result will lie on this diagonal line, so the electric field will be linearly polarized in this diagonal direction. If we set the same amplitudes for the x and the y components, the electromagnetic wave will be diagonally polarized at a 45 degree angle to the x and the y axes. Now we're going to introduce a polarizing filter. Recall that the probability a photon passes through a polarizer depends on the angle of the polarization of the photon and the angle of the polarizer. When they're parallel, that is the angle is zero degrees, there's a hundred percent transmission. When they are perpendicular, that is the angle between them is 90 degrees or pi over two radians, there is zero percent transmission. So when the polarizer is aligned in the x direction, the y component will be completely absorbed and only the x component will come through. The electromagnetic wave is linearly polarized in the x direction. When the polarizer is aligned in the y direction, the x component will be completely absorbed and only the y component will come through. The electromagnetic wave is linearly polarized in the y direction. The energy density in our vertically polarized electromagnetic wave is the permittivity of free space times the amplitude of the electric field intensity squared. We saw that if we brought in a horizontally oriented polarizing filter, it would completely block this vertically polarized electromagnetic wave. Let's introduce a second coordinate system that is rotated through an angle alpha with respect to our original coordinate system and let's indicate it with primes. We can represent our linearly polarized in the y direction electromagnetic wave by the sum of two vector components, one in the x prime direction and one in the y prime direction. Let's pick a specific angle, one that's pi over 4 radians or 45 degrees, so that it corresponds to the experiment we're trying to describe. So here's the representation of our linearly polarized in the y direction electromagnetic wave in terms of an x prime and y prime components. When a vertically polarized photon encounters a polarizing filter at 45 degrees, there's a 50% probability it will pass through. By introducing this diagonally polarized filter, we are changing quantum reality. The photon is no longer linearly polarized, but it's in two indeterminate states, one that's polarized in the direction of the filter and one that's polarized perpendicular to the filter. The state polarized parallel to the filter can pass through, the one oriented perpendicular to the filter cannot pass through. 
the interaction of the photon with the filter now collapses it in one of the two states. If it collapses into the state that's oriented parallel to the filter, it passes through. If it collapses in the state oriented perpendicular to the filter, it is absorbed by the filter. Beforehand, we do not know if the photon will go through or not. It's all probabilistic. So 50% of them pass through, and again we're going to have a linearly polarized electromagnetic wave. But now it's linearly polarized diagonally, and its amplitude is the original amplitude of the vertically polarized wave divided by the square root of 2. The energy density in the diagonally polarized electromagnetic wave is the permittivity of free space times the amplitude squared. And that works out to be half of the energy density in the original vertically polarized electromagnetic wave. And that makes sense because half of the photons have passed through the diagonally polarizing filter. To complete the explanation of our demonstration, we can now think about this diagonally polarized electromagnetic wave as having a component in the x direction and a component in the y direction. So if we bring in a horizontally polarized filter, the component that is polarized in the x direction will pass through. It's the same situation. The photon has a 50-50 chance of passing through because the quantum reality of the photon in this horizontally polarized filter is that the photon is in two indeterminate states. One that's oriented horizontally and one that's oriented vertically. A vertically oriented polarizing filter produces a vertically oriented electromagnetic wave or vertically oriented photons. So a horizontally oriented filter will block all those vertically polarized photons. A polarizing filter oriented at 45 degrees will allow 50% of those photons to pass, and the ones that pass through are now diagonally oriented. So if we now bring in our horizontally polarized filter, 50% of those diagonally polarized photons can pass through, and those that pass through are horizontally polarized. If vertically polarized photons first encounter a horizontally oriented filter, they are all blocked. So it doesn't matter if I now bring in a third polarizing filter, there are no photons that reach this diagonally polarized filter. Let's go back where we have a more general form for the electric field intensity where we have a component in the x and the y direction, but now we can have a phase shift between those two components indicated by this angle theta. Let's let the amplitudes be the same for the two components. Let's look at the electric field intensity in the z equals zero plane, and let's let the phase shift be minus pi over two radians, or minus 90 degrees. And we'll use a trig identity to rewrite cosine of omega t minus pi over two as sine of omega t. When omega t is zero, cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, so there's only a component of the electric field intensity in the x direction. Now let time advance until omega t is equal to pi over four radians or 45 degrees. Then we have equal components in the x and the y direction, and we see that the electric field intensity has rotated 45 degrees in the counterclockwise direction. 
time continues to increase and when omega t is equal to pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees now cosine of 90 is 0 sine of 90 is 1 and we only have an electric field intensity in the y direction so the electric field has further rotated in the counterclockwise direction and when time is advanced to where omega t is equal to 3 pi over 4 here is the resulting electric field intensity. So the electric field intensity is rotating counterclockwise as the electromagnetic wave is propagating in the plus z direction. This is called a right hand circular polarized wave because if you put your fingers of your right hand in the direction of the rotation of the electric field intensity, your right thumb points in the direction of the propagation of the wave. Again, let's set the amplitudes the same. We'll look at the electric field intensity in the z equals zero plane, and we'll set the phase shift theta to pi over two radians. We will use a trig identity to rewrite cosine of omega t plus 90 degrees as minus sine of omega t. When omega t is zero, Cosine of zero is one, sine of zero is zero, and we have an electric field intensity only in the x direction. As time advances, when we get to omega t is equal to pi over four radians, we'll have an equal component in the x direction and the minus y direction, so the electric field intensity has rotated clockwise 45 degrees. When time has advanced to where omega t is equal to pi over 2 radians or 90 degrees, cosine of 90 is 0, sine of 90 is 1, so we only have a component in the minus y direction, so the electric field intensity has further rotated clockwise another 45 degrees. So the electric field intensity is rotating clockwise as the electromagnetic wave is propagating in the plus z direction. This is called a left-hand circular polarized wave because if you put the fingers of your left hand in the direction of rotation of the electric field intensity, your left thumb points in the direction of propagation of the electromagnetic wave.